At Belize's international airport, people and cargo come and go. But today, something special is arriving by courier. It's a harpy eagle from Panama to be released into our forest, named Hope for a special purpose. He is a dramatic symbol for preserving Belize's forests and their role in reducing the effects of climate change. Hope the harpy eagle having this type of attention is going to have a positive benefit. And I think, too, the harpy eagle is such an effective draw to the important issue of climate change. It's a top predator. It needs lots of forest to survive. Belize still has intact forests suitable for harpy eagles, and this is what attracted the peregrine front from Panama. They have a successful harpy restoration program which releases these rare birds into the wild. They were looking to expand their program and Belize was an ideal place. Angel Muela is the driving force behind the program. He and his colleagues came in 2002 to find a suitable location in Belize. This, this place is, uh, is particularly nice because uh, there's uh, a lot of prey items that the, uh, the harpies uh, could go after. We're mainly trying to restore harpy eagle populations to uh, places where once existed and now it's either uh, extinct or the populations are depleted. The Peregrine Fund received the cooperation and support from our government and also works closely with the Belize Zoo and Program for Belize. Over a period of seven years from the breeding facility in Panama, 14 eagles arrived successfully by air. The young birds, still in their immature plumage, are released into the forest after a long period in secretive cages. Here, they adjust to their new environment and are monitored closely from hides. This keeps the birds out of sight so they do not habituate to man. The young birds enjoy their freedom. When they are ready for release, the young birds are fitted with radio and satellite tags, which will be used to track their movements. The adult birds are now ready for the wild and are to be released into Belize's largest intact forest, the Rio Bravo Conservation Management Area. This is where the Peregrine Fund released the 14 harpy eagles from Panama. They follow the birds using these tracking devices on the ground and in the air. They've been moving further down to Galanjog, they've been going on across to Guatemala on the Maya Biosphere Reserve, up in Caracmo uh, in Mexico, and then returning back to Rio Bravo towards Blue Creek area. There's one that has been uh, seen in uh, Tikal. Meanwhile, at the airport, Hope is transferred to his flight cage for the first leg of his journey into the forest of Rio Bravo. This will be the 15th Harpy Eagle released. It's been a long trip, <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, with the help of FedEx, we moved the Harpy Eagle from Panama to Guatemala on a commercial airline, and then from Guatemala to Belize on the smaller aircraft. They had a problem on the smaller aircraft. The flight cage could not fit into the plane, so Angel had to carry the bird on his lap from Guatemala to Belize. It will empower all the uh, conservation that we're doing in Rio Bravo and the whole uh, Selva Maya. I'm very excited that we were able to participate in something that is so tremendous. And um, FedEx is, um, is overwhelmed with the fact that we were able to contribute to something so large. FedEx Express has never been involved in a conservation project, but they stepped up to the plate when they discovered we were having difficulty getting Hope the Harpy Eagle from Panama to Belize, his new home. Hope is a guest at the Belize Zoo. He takes a break and gathers strength for his new life. I think it's important to realize that the forests that are chosen for the release of these eagles, we call it the Selva Maya. Yes, they're released at Rio Bravo, which is over 200,000 acres of forest. But that forest connects with forests in Guatemala to the west and with forests in Mexico to the north. It is the largest block of tropical forest north of the Amazon basin. So the importance of it 
is in its size. Our challenge is to make sure it stays there. Rainforests combine all the elements for a balanced environment, air, water, soil, and trees. They store water like a huge sponge, gradually releasing it back into the environment. Forests provide the humidity we need for life. They are the cornerstone of the climatic balance of which we depend. Plants absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen, which gives us life. They are the lungs of the planet. Forests are a storehouse of carbon, containing more than is in the entire Earth's atmosphere. 80% of the developed world's diet originated from tropical forests. They provide medicines to control diseases. Primary forests hold over half of all life on the planet. But it is alarming. We are losing about 50,000 species a year. This is due to deforestation, which is also a part of the problem of global climate change. To understand this, we need to look at the basic principles of how the planet sustains itself. The sun's heat passes through the atmosphere to the Earth's surface. Some is absorbed, but the majority is reflected. The heat is held by the atmosphere's gases and maintained in balance by the natural cycles of the planet. An imbalance in the gases is causing major climate changes. Man's increasing use of fossil fuels and agricultural practices is producing carbon dioxide and other gases which trap heat in our atmosphere. This is causing extreme climatic changes, the melting of the glaciers, the warming of the oceans, and rising sea levels. Major flooding is occurring which results in serious damages. As our population increases and we require more natural resources, we cut and burn more and more forest. This is contributing to these changes by producing about 20% of the world's total carbon emissions. This carbon was once stored in the trees. As the forest disappears, we expose the land to the mercy of the climate. With no forest to hold the moisture and to moderate the climate, we see crop failure and drought. This is alternated by heavy rains, which, with no forest to hold the water, results in flooding, mudslides, and erosion. In the countries of El Salvador and Honduras, this has happened. Do we want this to happen in Belize? We need to make sure that the forests that we have in place continue uh, in place. And so this is where we need uh, to put much more of our resources in. We are cutting more and more of our forests for agriculture, for uh, settlements, for tourism industries. And that is the area where we will now need to address. In spite of having some forests left, we are seeing the effects of global climate change. And the impacts we are seeing are horrifying. In 1999-2000, uh, we had the bark beetle infestation, which destroyed 75% of our pine forests. Again, directly related to climate change. We have had about five major episodes of coral bleaching in the past 10, 20 years which have destroyed 60% of our reefs. The past two years, we've been having some major floods in the North Stan Creek River, again, because we have cut down the rainforest there, and so the soils are no longer able to retain the water, and so it rushes down too quickly. We have severe floods where people who live there 50, 75 years never saw that magnitude of floods. So there's the whole issue of the watershed being affected. Traditionally, the farmers in Belize cleared the land in dry season and by the 1st of June expected the rains and then they had very, uh, very good crops. However, the farmers no longer know when to expect the rains. And so they are already experiencing the impacts of climate change directly. 